What's up, everybody? Jason from Jason's Exotic Reptiles. I'm here again with Kevin McCurley from New England Reptile Distributors. And today we're going to cover how to handle an aggressive slash defensive snake. Uh, I'm going to have Kevin do it. I don't want to do it. No, that's no, how I you should do say, it. I should say don't interact with the snake if you don't want to get bit. Actually, yeah. as a large snake handler and breeder, uh, very rarely do I ever get bit. That's yeah. just, it's, but some people have this really uh, excessive, worry of what it's going to be like and stuff like that and indeed any snake bite is, is not necessarily fun but a lot of times it's not nearly as bad as what you project but if you act like you're going to get bit and you kind of get this hyper -y kind of movement you telegraph he's going to write in front of our camera and you're going to telegraph uh your worry and you're going to become erratic and you're not going to have any smoothness to you it's all kind of like reading the animal and kind of just being aware, not overreacting when you shouldn't, because what it does is it calms the situation down, yeah. as you know. So today, I guess, uh, I don't have a lot of like psycho snakes or anything like that, but some of my pied retics tend to be uh, a little more on the reactive side. So if I say something's reactive, it doesn't mean it's like, snakes aren't mean. They're not, that mean is, is an incorrect term, because that means that like, literally wants to Go and bite you for no reason, only because it gets some kind of enjoyment. Snakes are like that. They're defensive. Sometimes they mistake you as food, but a lot of times they can just be defensive, and it's usually the problem with the keeper or the handler, how they're presenting themselves to the animal, how they're actually engaging the animal, and those are the problems. Sometimes slow down. It's better to think than react. And uh, so we're just going to kind of show you some of the basic ideas when we're dealing with a, a pyro tick that is reactive. Yes. Kevin's going to do it. I'll just remind you that. First, hide behind the barrel and stab it. No. So basically, if I'm going to the animal, and the animal, like, okay, see this cage right here? So the second cage up. So I'm higher than the animal, and uh, literally some of that is going to put the animal kind of in a position where it's a little, it's a little defensive indeed. So let me do this water dish, get out of here. Yeah. This level, so now the thing right off the bat, I've opened up the cage. Some snakes will come right to the front of the cage, and that's generally a food response. So, since we basically keep these animals in these boxes, the animal has to define whether or not it's food time or it's some kind of other thing. So, basically, that comes down, that's relying on the keeper, how they present themselves to the animal, and basically how they've trained that animal so they can manage it. So this is all, you know, every time we open up a cage, we have to manage that animal. We don't want to get bit. We want to have a good positive experience. So I'm looming down this animal, my eyes. Eyes are a big thing. Eyes basically are triggers. So if I'm sitting there and I've got an animal that's kind of defensive, let's say it's holding its ground and I'm glaring at it and I'm coming at it, that could be just enough for a really reactive uh, nervous animal to basically trigger it yeah. and trigger some kind of, something like a bite. So basically, snake cook, roll of paper towels, anything like that. One of the first things you do when you go into the cage is make sure you're, when you are opening the cage, the animal's not sitting at the window unless you have something to put in its face and basically teach it it's not food. So my animals quickly know when it's food time, when it's not food time. So I can use the butt of my snake hook, and sometimes I'll just go into the animal, I'll touch the animal, all right, so now she's moving. Okay. All right, so her, her head's swinging around. I'm going to pause this, and then I'm going to yeah, I'm focus in on Kevin. Can you see that? All right, so we're back. and uh, So I've touched this animal, and what the animal's going to do is going to kind of check out what's going on. So see what she's doing? She's creeping. So this animal, she'll hold her ground, and unless I basically manage her properly... You know, she could she could be a little defensive, and the defensive kind of bite is just like, hey, don't touch me, I'm kind of afraid of you, and they'll give you kind of like a half-hearted little bite, but still the same. It's a, it's a large constrictor, so what I just do, I watch her. So she she's coming, she's like keeps trying to double around. So bring that glass down. Give me that down. So you see her. So right now, this animal is very reproductive. At this point, so she's got really big follicles. So I just want to respect her. She's irritated by having a male. 
A lot of times, once you pull an animal to this point, you're pretty good. Now I'm going to watch the snake. What I don't want to let her do is to turn around on me and square up against me. So if she's moving away or anything like that, so she is very reactive. So I basically just, I want to keep her focus off of me. So now she's focusing up on Jason. The spin trick doesn't work when it's bigger than you. I invented the spin trick. That's true, I did, I learned that from Kevin. So basically, we're kind of keeping her moving. And so if she turns around and she wants to square up against me, I'll just, if she's turning to my left, I'll turn to the left. If she's turning, whatever. If I can keep her head away from me, that's a real good way to do it. So what I'm doing right now is I'm watching her tongue and how she's behaving. Right now, she's kind of like in the flight mode. So everything's okay. Good long tongue flicks. Yeah, what a pretty snake. But this animal is not 100% trustworthy. So I don't let like novice keepers or uh, I would never use this, you know, present around other people. It's not a good snake. Yeah. She basically is reactive. She, uh, she's unsure of herself. And so that basically means that I have an animal that is not reliable and something bad could happen. It's also a good opportunity for me to palpate her. When I'm palpating them, they don't like it either. Sometimes. She got beautiful follicles. Yeah, but notice how gentle he's being. He's being very respectful of the animal. Always. Uh, understanding, reading, reading all the gestures, all the body language that the snake is doing, the tongue flicks, the movement of the head. Uh, you know, he's, he's, he's doing all of that as part of what he's showing us right now. So one other thing, so I've let her back in her cage. Now she's turned around and she's squaring up again. One of the things, especially with reticulated pythons, when you touch their tails, so as we let them go back in the cage, we naturally sometimes just like what I just did, it kind of like was enjoying her tail. But a lot of times when you touch the tails, that is like some of the most defensive part of that snake's body. So basically, she gets a little extra defensive. A lot of times her head will come out right to meet whatever's touching her tail. So right now, she's squaring up. She's inching forward. This is where she would classic, you know, do like a little defensive strike or something like that. So if I let her just sit here and square up against me, basically, I can initiate some kind of defensive thing. I don't want to do that because my whole idea of threads and how to basically build trust and socialize your reptiles is defeated by bad episodes. So what I would do is I'd once again take the snake hook. I don't want her squaring up against me. I literally want her looking away because she thinks that she's basically engaging what is uh, scaring her and basically engaging the threat. I want to kind of get her so she stops like holding her ground and starts to just kind of move. So what I'll do, I'll come with the snake hook, get ahead and move around. Yeah, check out that tongue. That tongue knows everything right now. So that's just a very defensive snake. Yeah, so, so you have a defensive and reactive snake, as Kevin was saying, but he's treating it with respect. So right here, don't let her square up to you. She's very interested in the hook. And basically, Kind of get her to think, okay, it's not over. She's got the head to move away. She opened her mouth on that one. There you go. And basically, if you can have that whole episode with the animal without basically causing the animal much grief, certainly getting to blast the glass. So if I actually did something stupid, and let's say I got to bite the glass, when she bites the glass, that's going to hurt. Now she's going to associate looking at me and then having some kind of pain. So basically, you're going to reinforce the negative. So if I want to manage this, you know, 14-foot snake, and I want to be able to free handle her, I don't, whenever possible, I never, ever grab an animal behind his head. I don't restrain them. I try to work around the animal, but always that's free handling. The only time you ever do something like grab it behind the head is like, if, you know, if there's something wrong with its teeth or, if, you know, maybe you're ultrasounding a monitor. That's a worry. But basically... Those are all things that 
lose trust. Yeah. So if she blasts the glass, she is uh, they're going to associate that kind of pain. It's going to further enforce the idea that we should not be trusted, that people are bad. Yeah. So the same thing with monitors, and, and Kevin's approach to monitors applies to snakes as well, is that uh, always end with positive interactions. And if Kevin consistently kept this up, then I'm assuming that that snake would, would within a short period of time, be pretty manageable. Sure. Although I know pies can be a little iffy in their own. But, yep. Uh, and generally, a lot of my employees, what they do is actually, I don't even have them taking the animals out, a lot of them. They'll basically, these are shift cages, so I use a divider, and we'll shift the animal to one side of the cage, clean its cage, and then you can pull back out the divider so they get the full yeah. eight foot by three, a 30 inch uh, footprint. And that, that works really well, and basically allows people that have really no skills to manage large pythons yeah. or bubbas. So, all right, hopefully that was helpful. Leave some comments in the uh, comments section. Keep subscribing, we appreciate it all. Uh, check out Kevin's YouTube page. Nobody knows about it. It's uh, Do you have more than 12 viewers? I think I may have more than 12 at this I'm point. busting up to 15 viewers on 15 New England Reptile Distributors on YouTube. So make sure you check them out. Uh, what is it? New England Reptile Distributors on YouTube. So just search that. Kevin McCurley, Evil Morph God, kicking ass. Say a lot. Thanks, guys.